Heidi ho Andrew here, and today I would like to teach you how to find the x-intercepts of the function x to the 6th power minus 3x to the 4th power minus 4x to the 2nd power. So first thing is, just very quickly, what are x-intercepts? Pretend you have a particular function like this, okay? Doesn't matter if it's a smiley face there or a frown face, but the x-intercepts are going to be the locations on the graph where the uh, function crosses or intersects the x-axis. Now it turns out that you know something special about these two points. Not only do they lie on the x-axis, but you also know one of the coordinates of both of these points. And the coordinate is the same that I'm talking about that they have in common, all right, amongst those two points. Do you know what it is? Well, it turns out that it is the y value. We know that the y value is going to be zero for each of those points, okay? Because all points that lie along the x-axis have a y value of zero. So in other words, what I'm saying is that every time you solve for x-intercepts, you have to know that that's where the function's y value or the function's value will equal zero. So in other words, the y value or the function's value will equal zero at the x-intercepts. Now that is something very important you have to remember because that will allow us to plug in zero for f of x. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Zero is now equal to x to the sixth minus three x to the fourth minus four x squared. Now what you can do from here is you can do a little thinking, right? You can ask yourself, okay, well, what values of x here would make this right-hand side equal to zero? So what do you think? In other words, what x values here must make this side be zero? And you might see it already, like, well, zero, right, Andrew? If x were zero there and x were zero there and x were zero there, wouldn't the whole side go to zero? And I say, absolutely right. You're 100% correct. You actually found an x-intercept by just thinking about it. So x will be equal to zero when y is equal to zero, and this by definition is an x-intercept because the y value is zero. So in other words, this function should touch the origin somehow. Okay, now I, the picture I drew here had no relationship to this. I just drew a random image, all right, um, or a, a random function. Now, that's fine and dandy, and you might say, okay, great, I'm done, finished. Well, the only thing, yes, you did, you did get an answer, right? But do you know if there are more x-intercepts? Just because you can't think of them doesn't mean that there aren't any. All right. Now, that's the power of the algebra from here. Okay. So it's a lot harder now to maybe find the other ones. I mean, it would be very difficult. All right. That's where algebra comes in now. But what do we do? Well, the trick here and the technique is whenever we're trying to find x-intercepts, what I want to do is I want to try to factor this equation. Now, factoring is inherently creative, uh, right? Every, every particular function you're going to get is probably going to look different. My technique of how I approach this function might be different than the technique how I would approach a different function, all right? I have like 20 videos with different functions here just finding the x-intercepts. So I try to give you as much, much, much practice as I can, all right? So if you understood this one, great. Check out another video of ours here in the playlist and just do a different function, all right? The technique might change ever so slightly. Now, um, what I'm going to do first is I look to these terms and I'm going to try to factor out a common, the highest common factor first. And I realize that everything has an x squared in it, right? So then this whole thing is then reducible to basically x to the fourth minus 3x to the x squared, okay, or 3x to the second minus then 4, all right? Now, the whole point of the factoring is because I basically want to get two terms that are multiplied together, right? The operation in between these two terms is a multiplication, right? I'll put a little dot there. All right, so it's this term multiplied by this term. Now, the reason why I want it into that form is because I can kind of do this little game where I'm like, hey, if this term equals zero, then this whole side must equal zero because zero times whatever the heck this thing is would be zero, right? I could care less what the x squared works out to be. And conversely, the same thing the other way. If this term here could be zero, I could care less what's inside of this parenthesis because zero times whatever is inside of that parenthesis is still going to be zero, right? So this is now where, when you get to this point, when you have factors like this, when you have two terms that are multiplied together, is when you're going to start to now break this up into now two equations for yourself. Because the question you're asking yourself is, if this could somehow be equal to zero, then I know this whole side's equal to zero, and that would then be equal to zero, right? That would make that statement true. 
So what I'm going to do is make x squared equal to 0, and then make this side, x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus 4, also equal to 0. What I'm now trying to figure out is I'm asking myself, okay, can I solve this now algebraically, or can you just think about it? What value of x would I plug into this in order for it to be equal to zero? You might say, oh my goodness, that's so easy. It's zero, man. It's zero. You're 100% you're right. Right? The math here would just be square root both sides. Square root of zero is just zero. And look, bada bing, bada boom. But wait a minute. That's what you told me it was beforehand by just thinking about it intuitively. Right? Isn't that kind of cool? So that's one of the values. Right now, we got, we got to move on to this side. All right now, this side is a little harder. You're like, oh, wait a minute, next to the fourth? How the, okay, where do I go there? Okay, Andrew said I should start to factor. I should start to factor something and, you know, but I don't have any common terms here. Okay, I can, all right, maybe should I group these two together or, or these two together? Right, it gets a little harder at this point. Now, this is where pattern recognition and a ton of practice comes into play. All right, what do we do in this case? Well, what I'm realizing is that this pattern is awfully similar to this pattern, x squared minus 3x minus four, let me write that down beneath a little more, x squared minus three uh, x minus four is equal to zero. It's awfully similar, this is awfully similar to this. It's not identical, and I'm not suggesting that these two are equal, but what I'm saying is it's awfully similar. Now you might say, or I'm gonna ask you actually, how would you solve this? You might say, oh yeah, it's a quadratic. I know this pattern, x squared x and then the constant, right? So you're thinking, okay, two numbers that multiply to give me negative four, right? But then, add, but then add up to positive 3. And you're like, oh, right, isn't that going to be a negative 4 and a positive 1? Right? They both multiply to negative 4, but yet add to positive 3. And I'm going to say, yes, absolutely. Right? And then all you do is you add your x's. Basically, what you do is whatever this term is, whatever the leading term is, you're just going to square root it. Okay? So that's an x. And then that's an x. And if you now were to FOIL this, if you did x times x, that would be x squared. x times 1 would be x. Negative 4 times negative x would be negative 4x. And neg the negative 4x, you know, added to the positive x would have been negative 3x, right? And then the negative 4 times <laughs> times the positive 1, right, would have been the negative 4, all right? Now, that's exactly correct, okay? That's how you would have factored it. Now, this problem over here is basically identical, okay? In other words, you're going to factor it, okay? Exactly how we did before. Two numbers that multiply to negative 4 but add to negative 3. So I got my negative 4 here and I have my positive one over there. The only difference is the leading term is to the fourth. So I'm gonna square root it, and that basically becomes x squared now. And those are now your factors. Okay, those are the factors. They might say, oh great, goody gumdrops, I'm gonna do this anytime I have x to the fourth. No, 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 because that's not the only pattern, right? It basically goes, if you have something where you have x to the fourth, or you have, let me call this something like x, I'll call this like a, all right? plus or minus, it doesn't matter, x to the a over 2, plus then some constant term, equaling 0. If this is your pattern, right, and that's kind of what you, that's what math does. You want to identify a pattern between these two, and then you can create some general statement out of it, right? You want to try to identify the pattern, okay? And I'll make sure, these look like nines now, but I meant to make their, they should be, you can make them whatever letter you like, Okay. Not x, though, because x we chose as the base number or base variable. All right, but you can call it a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h, or j. You can use Greek letters, whatever you want, okay? Now, this is the pattern. So anytime you have this pattern, you're doing this method, okay, that we, that we went over. Now, again, what do we do from here now? You might say, well, I just set this thing, I just break this apart and set these both equal to zero. Do you know why you're doing that? It's the same reason why we did it over here. I bet, though, you didn't recognize that in this case, right? Or maybe you did. I'm not saying you didn't, but I, 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 I remember being a student at one point, and I didn't recognize this, so I'm just kind of imagining, you know, that I'm putting myself back in your shoes. Um, but I would recognize to set it equal to zero here, and I possibly would be recognize it equal to, you know, how to set it up and make them both equal to zero there, but I don't think I'd notice it here. But the fact of the matter is that it's identical. You have two terms, one here and then one here, and you broke them up and you set them both equal to zero, okay? For the reasons we discussed before, so rewind the video if you have to. And the same thing here, all right? If this term goes to zero, then the whole thing goes to zero. Or if this term goes to zero, then the whole thing goes to zero. So I'm gonna break that up into two now uh, equations for myself. All right, 
And let me just erase all this. Well, not really all of it because I don't need all that space, but there we go. Okay. Now your job is just to solve for the x, uh, x value. So add the 4 on over, right? And then since I'm running out of space, this would just be x squared is equal to 4. All right, and they have square root both sides, so we realize that x will be equal to plus or minus 2. Anytime you take that square root, it's going to be positive and negative. In other words, you got two values there. You're going to have that x should be equal to positive 2, and x should be equal to negative 2 as well. Cool. All right, great. Fine and dandy. Now, do we have more? Well, do the math on this side now, right? Minus 1 from both sides. We got x squared is equal to negative 1, and you're like, wait a minute, if I square root this, I'm going to get an imaginary number. This is actually i. It's some imaginary root. We're not doing that. Okay, we're working with real values here, real values, not imaginary. So therefore, just you can say something like does not exist, or it's imaginary, or just don't worry about it. Okay, so we basically have now our three values, and that those are actually the x-intercepts. That's it. Okay, that's it. Now I know it's like, okay, great, I understood all this, but man, the math got a little complicated here, and I kind of lost track of what this should look like visually. We'll just go to your calculator now. All right, plug in x raised to the sixth, x raised to the sixth, hit the arrow, uh, then do uh, minus uh, 3x to the fourth, right? 3x to the fourth, and then do minus 4x squared. And I messed that up. Come on, Andrew. What are you doing? Was it your first day using a calculator? Embarrassing. Aren't you embarrassed? Where's that from? Aren't you embarrassed? I would tell you a little more, but tell me who's... You would know if you, yeah, you would definitely know. All right. Aren't you embarrassed? Oh, God, I love watching him. Okay, anyway, uh, minus x raised, uh, excuse me, minus 4, back on track, x squared. Okay, that's enough. Oh, no, did I just hit the clear button? You, oh, my, are you kidding? All right, let's do it one more time. x raised to the 6th, that's what happens when you get distracted. Minus 3. X raised to the fourth. Okay, 100% this time. Minus four. X squared. Good. Don't hit clear. Okay, go to zoom, hit standard, and there's our little picture. Now, isn't this beautiful? Look at this. Look at this. This is the graph. Okay, this is what the function looks like. And remember, every single tick mark here when you're in standard zoom represents a unit of one. So look, if you go to the left, negative one, then negative two. Oh my goodness. Is it intersecting at negative 2? Uh, yes, it is. And is that what we said using the algebra? Yes, it is. Notice how this graph is also touching the origin, right? So it's it's touching that x-axis at 0. Oh, my goodness, that's what we said it should do. And wait a minute, if I go to the right two units, that would be a positive 2. And wait a minute, that's what we said. You see? That's exactly it. Okay? So all this math is meant to, all this, yeah, you know, all the algebra is meant to help us when the problem becomes complicated, all right? But you don't want to lose sight of what we're actually doing, what we're doing visually, all right? So hopefully this made sense. I really do appreciate you tuning in. Let me just erase all this so you can look at this beautiful work. And uh, yeah, that's all there is to it, okay? Thanks, guys, for tuning in. I look forward to helping you with more problems, all right? Be well.